and welcome to Girls Night Out. Seven high school girls games coming your way and we will start with a district final rematch from last year. Arlington edged out of Ville by a point the last time they met in February. Now the Red Devils bring their unblemished 8-0 record to out of Ville, the Big Green with one loss on the season. First quarter, CJ Kemper, quick pump fake inside and off the glass. Out of Ville opening with the first basket of the game. Arlington comes right back at him. Whitney Dodds tapping the circle button high off the glass. Ball game tied at twos. Then out of Ville opens up on a nine point run. Alexis Thorbin to Bridget Landon. The triple try is true. Big Green ahead 11 to two, but then Arlington answers with a little seven point run of their own. Jamie Webb dialing one up from long distance. Red Devils down 11 nine, but Ottoville avenges their loss from last year. Kemper destroying defenses with her pump fake. Ottoville hands Arlington their first loss of the season. The Big Green win 53 to 47. Another Titan who was undefeated are the girls from Ottawa Glandorf. They travel to take on undefeated Columbus Grove. OG down, but not out. Katie Hempfling with a spin move in the paint to cut the lead to one. Titans behind seven to six. Bulldogs biting back. Jade Clement capitalizes on the high pass and takes it all the way to the bucket. Columbus Grove ahead nine to eight. Now it's Macy McClure hitting Paige Bellman for the basket. Ball game tied at 11s. It's a close game throughout, but OG comes out on top. Kylie White with the putback to put the Lady Titans up two and they hold on to win, defeating Columbus Grove 45 to 44. They have knocked off three straight undefeated teams. Another, well, excuse me, as we head to championship night at the bathtub, Minster and LCC battling out for the top spot in the McDonald's holiday tournament. Savannah Luthman with the wide open jumper, Minster ahead 32 to nine. Moments later, Lindsey Rutgerman misses the layup, but it's Johnny on the spot with the putback and they draw the foul. Wildcats lead 34 to nine. LCC needing some more points. Jocelyn Morrissey with the power move to get to the basket. T-Birds trail 34-11, but the night belongs to Minster. Rutgerman drives the baseline to get to the basket to put them up 29. The Wildcats win their first ever McDonald's holiday tournament with a score of 60 to 26. As for the consolation game, the host school Bath battling with Bellevue for third place. Third quarter, Lindsay Singhouse with the long two. Bath ahead 40 to 32. Now they go inside. Jaden Hill with the low finger roll. Bath on top 42 to 34 and they hold on to their lead. Do not leave Bailey Dak in that open. She knocks it down. Bath wins 61 to 59. Heading just across town, the first game of the Vicky Mock Holiday Tournament. Lima Senior matching up with Tenora. First quarter, Amber Schlisser catching the pass and up with the layup. Tenora leads 10 to 4. Ensuing possession, Latuan Cowan with her layup of her own. Lima Senior trails 10 to 6. Spartans continue to attack. Kier James with the floater. Spartans, Spartans, excuse me, down 12 to 8. And Lima Senior completes the comeback. Latuan Cowan to Destiny McDonald, finishing at the rim. Lima Senior wins 67 to 54. The nightcap at the Elida Fieldhouse, the home team hosting Allen East. First quarter, Elida starting outside. Lauren Alexander firing from downtown. It splashes through. Elida up 5-0. Bulldogs on a 10-0 run. Shia Wheeler with the gimme. Elida ahead 10-0. Allen East gets on the board. Gracie Young puts in a three ball. Mustangs trail 10-3. But Elida closes this one out. Hope Carter hitting the triple. Elida defeats Allen East 51-28. They play Lima Senior tomorrow for the championship. A cross-conference matchup between the Mac and WBL. St. John's welcoming Van Wert. Second quarter, Taylor's Zuber to Madeline Schulte from the land of three. The captain puts the Blue Jays within three. St. John's trails 12-9. Van Wert on the attack. Cassidy Myers slicing and dicing her way into the lane. Cougars up 14-9. Van Wert led most of the first half, but St. John's battles back. Betty Vorst with the basket and one. St. John's wins 46-35. Moving to the collegiate level, the fourth annual McDonald's Holiday Tournament at Bluffton. First quarter, Abigail O'Donnell with the baseline jumper. Bluffton leads 4-0. More from O'Donnell. She drives baseline and hits the leaner over the defense. Beavers ahead 8-2, and Bluffton wins. They will play in the championship bout, winning 53-35. They face St. Thomas tomorrow. In our only college men's game of the night, third-ranked Indiana Westland traveling to the garage. First quarter, Lawrence Jackson with the jab, stab, and pulling from beyond the arc. The All-American puts the races on top 20-10. to 10. Moments later, Sadiq Bellow must know the banks open in Lima late on a Thursday. UNOH goes on to win by 1.80 to 79. Let's take a break here on your News Now Sports. But when we come back, we take a stop in Wapak. The Redskins team trying to find something they have not had since 1990. Find out what that is after the break. Welcome back. Wapakoneta is off to a 6-1 start, their best since the 2005-2006 season. But this year, Skins are hoping for more success come season's end. 
but right now we're uh, pointing toward the WBL championship. In his second year at Wapakoneta, Doug Davis's prior experience is already showing. One through two teams to make it to regional has helped me as a coach. I think that uh, as far as understanding uh, what it takes and the relationship with the team, those two seasons really helped me a lot, and uh, I hope it carries over to this team and this program. I feel it's an exciting change and that a new coach with a new philosophy and we want to get up and down the court and put shots up and score points. After a big victory over Perry last night, the confidence of this Wapak team is bursting through the seams. We've seen teams that play different styles of basketball here in the last few weeks, and uh, we've been able to adjust and, and play with different styles, and I'm real happy that we've been able to do that. The Redskins are bounced with three seniors, three juniors, and three sophomores. Wapak does not have a set starting five, making it difficult for opponents to know what they are going to get. If we have a player that's not playing for particularly well, not shooting particularly well. Other guys have picked us up and, and anybody on a different night has done the job for us. Different starters every week and anybody can come off the bench and spark like Adam last night at 19 and uh, five threes, but anybody, it's anybody's week, I guess. It's nice that we can rotate players in and out the way we, way we do. We've had five different guys as a leading scorer this year. so. Um, makes it tough for teams to uh, guard us. The goal in Wapakoneta is simple. Bring home a conference championship that has not been seen in 26 years. That's definitely a major goal for me as a senior to win WL since 1990s. We gotta lose that drought. It's a big deal because never in my lifetime have I seen Wapak basketball successes and this would be very important to me. All right, we'll be back with stocks.